Um, it's great to be here and see everyone um, here. Now, I wanted to take you on a bit of a journey. Um, but first of all, I want to start with a statement. I don't believe that companies create I great ideas. I believe that people do. Now, let me talk to you about why I'm standing here and a little bit about my story and how I ended up here. Now, first of all, my accent's a little messed up. I grew up in four countries. Now, I'm not going to tell you what they are. I'll let you guess and see how you go. But as part of that journey, I ended up um, spending a bit of time in Australia, so there's one giveaway. And part of that time in Australia, I had the ability to disrupt the market. So while I was out there, we had the ability to take Virgin Money to Australia. They told us it couldn't be done. The market was crowded. What were you going to do and why were you going to do it differently? What we did do differently was think differently. And part of the Virgin Group was about putting the customer first and thinking about what did the customer not want, not what the bank's bottom line wanted. So we went into the market and we launched Virgin Money. We launched one of the lowest credit cards that they had seen. They told us it couldn't work. Week one, we get 50,000 applications. We couldn't cope. Two call centers couldn't get through that. In the next few years, we got 4% market share and about a million applications from the Australian market. So we got to disrupt and make a real difference. So where does that take me here today? Is back in the innovation space. I think we're back in a place again where we can make true disruptive change, and hence being there. So let me take you on a bit of journey about Ulster Bank. What keeps us going? We asked the question, Jack Welsh, famous CEO, he said, if the rate of the change on the outside exceeds the rate of change on the inside, the end is near. This is what we base innovation on Ulster Bank, and it keeps us going. But there was a new paradigm. The world was changing. Fintechs were outsmarting us, outpacing us. They were doing things that we couldn't do. So another challenge was set out. Simon McMara from RBS, our CIO, he said he wanted RBS to be the biggest startup in the world. No mean feat, no mean <laughs> ask. But it wasn't only that, we had to think differently. The bank in the past had thought about 10% increase in profits, 10% decrease in costs. That wasn't going to work. We had to think 10x. We had to change fundamentally of where, where we had been. And as you all know, banks did very well. The mindset of banks was to fortify. We built up our assets, we built walls, we defended them, we kept people out, we kept our secrets in. That did us for so long, but it didn't get us where we needed to go. We needed to start to look at creating new opportunities and looking for new growth. So we actually had to set sail and leave the shores that we knew and started looking for something different. And I know this was touched on earlier, and it was about thinking about innovation and entrepreneurship. Where does that fit in an organization? A lot of organizations today, it doesn't fit. We have sales and marketing, we have IT, we have finance. But where does entre entrepreneurship and innovation sit? In a lot of cases, it doesn't. Now, I don't know if anyone have experienced in here as part of a very large corporation, we have great antibodies. And antibodies are great things to protect the bank and keep things out. And innovation is seen sometimes like a little bit of a virus, trying to get in there. And I know some of you in here would have heard the terms, can't be done, cost too much, been there before. You probably all heard that, right? That's what you're dealing with. So as a bank, how are we going to change and innovate, a bit like the fintechs? One thing we knew for sure is that we had to leave the mothership. We had to step away, we had to think differently, be differently, and see the world in a different way. So we went out searching across the globe saying, what's happening out there that we're not doing? And one of the key trends was entrepreneurship. It was about allowing the staff internally to start to make difference. So we went out, the largest bank, and one of the oldest ones in America, started taking 1% of their revenues and reinvesting it in a VC style way. They're investing in their ideas and their people. We saw ESB here looking at incubating ideas and creating something different. And then, of course, Google created Area 120. And Area 120 allowed staff to come and pitch their ideas, get funding, and actually deliver them. We knew that also, if we wanted to be different, we couldn't just live where we, in our four walls, the way the bank's looking. We had to embed ourselves in an ecosystem. We had to embed ourselves in an ecosystem surrounded by innovation and surrounded by companies innovating, challenging, doing something different. And we found ourselves the right place being in the digital docklands, surrounded by the likes of Citi, Facebook, Airbnb, 
And in that journey, we found a company called Dogpatch Labs, which Peter has mentioned, a very innovative company that wanted to create a central platform for entrepreneurship and innovation in Ireland. But we weren't the only ones who saw this. The likes of Alltech, ESB, Pivotal, Google, also saw the opportunity to partner and collaborate. So this collaboration placed us in the middle of an ecosystem. So we had to step outside our fortified walls and we had to join everyone else. We joined startups, we joined universities, we joined the number of residents and startups and fintechs that were out there. So the question was, we can work with startups, but the real question was how, how will we work like a startup? So this is the challenge that we had. So the partnership that we created with Dogpatch Labs, Labs was based on three key pillars. The first one being on community, that we embedded ourselves in a community where we created trust and advocacy, got to know what was going on out there, supported them. Uh, we've had our fifth year of a hackathon where we bring together about 250 developers, business people, where they create and code over an entire weekend and then have their, days, uh, their ideas realized in front of the right audience. The other most important one, culture, in which I'll go into further, is actually changing our culture internally. We brought, we had thousands of meeting hours and bringing people over, letting them to listen to communities and fintechs and telling their stories about why they made a difference and starting to create that change within the organization. And the third pillar was creating an innovation platform. And that innovation with platform was to allow us to create something different and unique in a safe environment. But we had to take it one step further. Kieran Coyle, our MD of Retail, said to us, it's about taking a startup culture and making it available to everyone who works at Ulster Bank to accelerate their ideas. Hence, Startup was born. Startup is the first entrepreneurial Irish program that you've seen out here. We know that our staff talk to customers every day. They know the problems. They have their ideas. The question is, how do they bring their ideas to reality? And how were they backed by the business with their voices heard to have this, this happen for them? Now, I think instead of me talking through it, I'll show you a little bit about what the program looks like. Last year, we launched this program for the first time in Ulster Bank with the support of our partners in Dogpatch Labs. It was the first of its kind in RBS and we believe in the financial services industry in Ireland. And it was a huge success. Startup is an internal incubator program that involves three core weeks of workshops and mentoring based here at John Patch Labs. The incubator program is a great way for Ulster Bank to inspire cultural change inside of its organization. I believe that entrepreneurs can be found anywhere. And at Dogpatch, what we're trying to do is unlock the latent entrepreneurial energy that's within Ulster Bank. 70 ideas generated, 14 staff working throughout the program, culminating in presentations through to RBS execs and Ulster execs. The staff from last year, in terms of personal development, we are seeing people getting promotions, securing new roles. They're really becoming our advocates for innovation in the bank as we strive to become a simpler, safer, customer-centric organization. It has been like a roller coaster. It's been exciting, gut-wrenching, challenging. It has awakened an energy in me that both my colleagues and my managers in my daytime job have confirmed was contagious. This provides you with a safe environment to take an idea and to bring it to life be like an entrepreneur to test yourself and that's been really fulfilling for me from a personal development point of view. I think the highlight for me has been the freedom to think big. In our day jobs we're constrained by the regulation, the governance, the environment and just the freedom of, that Dog Patch gives you to, to go out there and think big and, and look at people who've done the same. I'd encourage everyone to register for one of the startup events <coughs> that will be running around the country in the coming weeks. You can also visit the startup group on Workplace and post your ideas, or visit our internet site and complete a formal application there. Um, as you'll see there, Patrick Walsh, the MD, um, and if you're ever down to pop, dog patch, pop in and say hello, but I thought it was interesting. He said, anyone could be an entrepreneur. What they cut out was even in a bank. We didn't let him keep that. So the program was a structured program. It's part virtual and part physical. We actually take five teams, three people apiece, and we immerse them. 
So we take them into three weeks um, off sites, away from the bank, away from their day jobs, and we put them in and let them create ideas. And between those times, we give them 20% time, which they work together, collaborate, and bring their ideas to fruition. Now, I can sit up here and talk about it in a theoretical way, or I can share, share a real experience. Last year, I was a participant on this program, and this year, I'm running it. So for me, I experienced firsthand. So when I went through, I had an idea about helping small businesses. And I wanted to create them with credit much more rapidly. So we combine forces and disrupt the market by engaging with alternative lenders. Because the bank doesn't offer everything for every small business. And through my, um, uh, my kind of journey through that, I was lucky enough that we got to go to the Innovation Forum in RBS. Uh, we were granted the money to see this through. And then we were actually able to, at the moment, we're working through building the platform. And hopefully, fingers crossed, next month, we'll actually have this in the hands of customers, working with accountants to test this new technology. But as part of the program and why I was able to go through that journey is we created a live entrepreneurial environment, a different way of thinking. It had a different pace. It had a different openness to what you could do. It also gave you personal ownership. It was your idea. It's not what the bank wanted or what they thought was better or how it fit in the strategy. It was your personal idea. You got to own that and drive that through. But most importantly, you weren't left alone. The mentors and ecosystem that we live within, Dogpatch, was fundamentally important. They linked us to entrepreneurs that had launched massive companies and fintechs that had been there and done that. And they linked us into that so we weren't alone in this journey. And they didn't let us make the mistakes that they made. So we rapidly accelerated our ideas till we could get them to reality. We had a space to unlock our ideas. And most importantly, we were talking about, and I know Jer's not here, but he talked about not having the skills for the future. And when we're in the bank, there are certain skills that we're missing. But part of this program allowed us to unlock really big issues that we have. Pitching, <coughs> presenting, selling an idea, building a business plan. These are things that were lost in the mix, but we brought them to the fore and give them that development. And I'm happy to say from our alumni last year, out of the entire cohort, 50% have got promotions. So it's worked. And it wasn't only just about chatting and having ideas. This is real core deliverables. They had to do a five minute pitch. They had 20 minutes in front of RBS executives and Ulster Bank executives. 20 minutes of hard questioning is not fun. But if you know your stuff, it'll be OK. We developed business plans, financial models. But what was real in the end, we just didn't talk about our idea. We had working prototypes. We had built code that was actually delivering what we said it would deliver. So what did the business say about it? And what did the staff say about it? Well, we had Kevin Hanley from uh, the head of the innovation for RBS Group. He said, these are some of the best pitches I've seen along the sides of Silicon Valley. No mean feat in 13 weeks. And we had staff feedback, this is the best program I've ever been on in 15 years. So the question is, that's interesting. But where are you now? Where have you got to with all this? Our innovation has been a journey. Um, we started in our phase one of building blocks of innovation. We had to build our blocks to bring people on to allow them to learn. As we moved up, we moved into the entrepreneurial space, putting the control in the hands of our staff and bringing those teams forward with their ideas. They were frontline to the customers, and they knew the problems, and they knew how to solve them. And our next phase is taking that to scale. At the moment, we've had a number of ideas. Um, we've got one that is live in the hands of customers. There's another one just about to come out. So the question is now, once we prove our technology and our ideas and our innovation, how do we scale this? So I'm going to take a little moment to say that we were quite lucky. So this program was happening internally. Um, it was something quite different. Um, and it is sometimes nice to be recognized by industry. So about two weeks ago, uh, Deloitte recognized us in the learning category uh, in financial innovation. And the reason why we were identified was that we were actually trying to change the culture. And we're embedding culture and actually making a difference and changing that. But on that journey as well, not only changing innovation, we're actually building a portfolio. We're building a portfolio where there's a number of changes. We've just finished our second incubator this year. We have 10 ideas. And as you can see in the grid, some sit in the transformation space, some sit on core, some sit adjacent. As in true innovation, some will fail fast. Some won't go any further than this, and some will. But this is a space where we're creating a safer environment that you can fail, and you can, um, and you can learn in the journey. So our journey uh, as part of Ulster Bank is that we're creating ambassadors. We're giving them the schools, the skills, and the tools to go out there. 
more importantly, they're taking the enthusiasm and the way they think differently and what they've learned. Cultural change is an inside job, and we know this. But with the right people, the right skills, and the right tools, we can lead the way in innovation that will not only be noticed as part of the RBS group, but wider within the industry. I believe that Ulster Bank are placed in a way that they have this. They also have buy-ins from stakeholders to start to change the way that the bank has always thought and start to innovate in a different way. And on that note, um, I'll finish on that, but I'll leave you with a quote from a famous gentleman that will keep us all on our toes, Charles Darwin. It's not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent. It's the one that can adapt to change. And on that, I'll leave you.